Cool. Uh, welcome, guys, to the God's Warriors meeting, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'll go over some quick notes. Like I said, the purpose of this is just really to uh, reach non-believers. So you're, you know, we're called to be a disciple of Christ, right? So, um, and this is spiritual warfare, right? We're in Satan's kingdom here on earth. We're part of uh, God's kingdom. So that's why I call God's warriors is because we're warriors for God, right? I know a few other ministries that do uh, soldiers, uh, soldiers for God or soldiers for Jesus, right? So God's warriors is a revelation that God put on my heart about a year ago. I started the community and now it's been about a year and uh, God really put on my heart to make it more of a ministry and just take it more serious. So that's why we're doing the weekly calls and um, different things like that. Um let me know if you guys have any questions in the meantime. I'm going to go over some quick notes and then we'll get into Bible study. Um, if you guys have your Bible or if you want to go on the Bible app, we're going over John 2 um, today. But some quick notes I wanted to go on beforehand because I just got off of uh, an online church. I figured I would jot some notes and, and share with you guys. Um, uh, so tomorrow I'm actually speaking at my church um, for about 10 minutes about um, what, how, what God has been doing in my life uh, and testifying for God and giving gl glory to God of exactly what he's been doing in my life. Um, and it's funny enough, you know, even in the, the, the sermon or the church session, I just got off of talking about how we need to seek God more. Right. And that's what I've been seeing is like, the more that you seek God, um, it says, you know, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be answered, right? So it's just like, I have a friend that used to be in the Christian faith and he stepped away from it. And he said this, like, if God like just shows up in my room or talks to me or does something where I have undeniable faith, I'll believe again. And I was thinking about that after I got off the phone with him and I was thinking, God's not going to just, most like most of the time, God's not going to just like come at you. You have to seek him right to find him yeah you, you have to you have to seek him so um seek and talk to god more you know worship god say i love jesus uh giving him everything uh, when you do that you will win right a, a verse that really sticks sticks with me especially right now in my this time of my life is um seek the kingdom of god and all of his righteousness and everything else will be added to you right so the more that you seek god and his kingdom he will bless your finances. He'll bless your business. He'll bless your, your relationships. He'll bless your health. He'll bless everything else. If you're truly, you know, making him a priority and seeking him right uh, in his kingdom, right? Because we have to, to know Jesus and have a relationship with Christ, right? And that gives us specifically this guy in the sermon was talking about casting out demons because I'm really into deliverance ministry. That was my first experience with Christ is through deliverance ministry. Um, and he's talking about don't make casting out demons or healing the sick or preaching a sermon or whatever, worshiping, you know, guitar, whatever. Don't make that the priority where you're focused on that. Focus on Christ and Christ alone. Focus on your relationship with God and the deliverance, casting out demons, healing the sick, preaching, you know, worship, whatever your, your forte, your spiritual gift is, will naturally come because you have a strong relationship with Christ. Um, and it's having, uh, having your identity and your authority in Christ, right. And just like apostle Paul preaching Christ and Christ alone, right. We're called as God's warriors, right. As disciples of Christ to preach the gospel, the good news, right. And to preach Christ, tell people about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Right. And there's lots of people in the church. There's a lot of people who are Christian who don't share their faith. Right. And I believe it's because of their own personal relationship with Christ isn't they don't have enough conviction. Right. And I think it's something to pray for. Right. It's pray for more uh, boldness and courageous through the Holy Spirit and um, to, you know, to be able to share the gospel. It's easy with family and friends, but even with uh, the world and strangers. Right. Um, uh, once you believe in Christ, all signs point to Christ. Right. So if you're uh, when you're when you don't believe in Christ and you don't believe in God or, or whatever scenario beforehand, you might ask for signs and they might lead you different directions. But once you're a believer of Christ, a lot of the times when you pray for a sign, obviously God's going to guide you in the direction that 
he wants to go in, but ultimately it's like, seek me more, seek God more. Right. Um, cool. Let me know if any of you guys have any uh, revelations or, or things you want to say uh, while I go through these real quick. Um, just talking about praising the father, right? Praise God more for everything, like every single day, just being grateful for God, uh, worshiping him, saying, God, what a beautiful sunset. What a beautiful sunrise. God, thank you for this relationship I have. Thank you for, you know, the, just like praising God more and more. Um, and, you know, we should be doing that. Again, don't focus on demons. Don't focus on hell. Don't focus on Satan. Focus on heaven, right? Because if you're truly a believer in Christ, right? If you're truly, you know, believe, if you're truly have that faith and belief, you have eternal life. And that's something to, to praise. That's something to be excited about, right? So let's not focus on the negative, even though we have to go to war against it. But let's focus on the positives that we, you know, we're going to heaven. Um, preach the gospel. Paul, um, Paul, Apostle Paul preached the gospel and the gospel alone. All I know is Christ, he said. Um, focus on Jesus. Focus on preaching the gospel. Uh, Paul um, decided to make tents, right? And then it's talking about how you, he was getting money from the churches for preaching and doing all that great stuff. And people were talking about, oh, you know, how how he's taking money or always, you know, uh, like he he's getting money from the churches, this and that. And he said, fine, I don't want the money from the church. And so he started making tents, right, for a living. And so that he could go to these different cities and still preach the gospel without taking money from the churches. He would do a normal, you know, nine to five making tents, right, and preach the gospel. Um. This is the Bible. Read the Bible. Um, the miracles are real. Deliverance is real. Healing the sick is real. All of this stuff is real, like the supernatural side of Christianity. It's real. But let's not lose sight that we need to focus, be focused not on that, but focus on Christ first and foremost. Um, everything should be pointing to Jesus. So he, uh, you know, he, he was referencing in scripture, I forgot which specifically, where, you know, you could be used for the kingdom of God and not go to heaven. So you could be casting out demons, healing the sick, preaching the gospel, doing all this stuff. But if you don't have a relationship with Christ, if you're not focused on your relationship with God, you will still, still not enter the kingdom of heaven. So I, God's going to be like, thanks for helping me out. But you, you haven't talked to me in 30 something years. Right. So uh, making sure that we're not making uh, it, it an idol. To serve God with with whatever you guys, how you guys serve God um, as, as God's warriors, right? We're called to serve God. And that's why one of the purposes I want to make within this uh, community as well is um, it's not just about believing in God and having faith in Jesus, but it's also about being being a disciple and picking up your cross and following following Christ. And he called us to 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 preach the gospel. He 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 called us to share our faith. Right. He calls us to um, he, he says in uh, John 14, 12, that you will do things such as me and even greater things. Right. When he was talking to his disciples, because they were so amazed that he was healing the sick, turning water into wine, walking on water. But he said, hey, guys, you can do the same things and even greater things. So I think people who truly follow Christ and have faith in Christ, he calls us to do miracles just like he did. If you truly are filled with the Holy Spirit, because God's spirit lives within you so you can do things such as Jesus did only through the power of his spirit, right? Which is going to come from faith, right? Because it says, if you have faith as a mustard, a mustard seed, you can move mountains, right? So that means that just, if you have a little bit of faith, you can move a mountain. Most people don't have any faith, even if they believe in Christ because even Satan and demons believe in Christ. Mormons believe in Christ. Buddha believes in Christ. Like uh, Islam believes in Christ. They believe but they don't have faith that he is the son of God, God living in the flesh, died on the cross for our sins, right? So even if you have, if you have faith of a mustard seed and that, you can move mountains, right? So I think that's really good to remind, remember. Um, my, my salvation comes from Jesus and Jesus alone to remember that uh, we're not saved by works. So even though that we are God's warriors and we're, 
we get we're called to to pick up our cross and follow and actually serve the kingdom of God. That's not God's not going to love us anymore, and it's not going to give us even more salvation, right? Um, but James in the book of James, faith without works is dead. So if you're not serving God in God's kingdom, your faith is dead. So you got to you got to remember that there's plenty of examples. That's something I'm preaching at church tomorrow. I'm going to say I'm like, hey, faith without works is dead. So if you're not serving the kingdom, how alive is your faith? Because God, when you believe in Christ, and you truly have faith. His spirit lives within you. Naturally, you should want to do things for Christ. Naturally, you should want to work um, for for the kingdom. Um, cool. Um, get in your word, pray and worship, right? That's the things, pray, work, read the word and worship and also church and fellowship. This is great. Um, talking about, uh, I mean, the last thing, he always goes into this. Um, a lot of a lot of pastors won't preach it or talk about it that much. And it's very like a s- skeptical. So I come from the world, the world of chasing success and money and business. And um, there's a thing about scarcity and money, this and that. And so it's like related. It's not prosperity gospels, but it's biblical to tithe, to sow and to give first fruits. And he's talking about how if you do that, that's where the only thing in the Bible where God says, test him and he will open the floodgates of heaven and, and bless your life. If you, if you're follow the commandment of tithing, which means 10% of your income goes to the church or whatever, sowing or an offering is anything above that. So that's just like, Hey, this is past my commandment. I just want to give to God's kingdom to whatever ministry or church. Like I want to give right. And first fruits is if you get a big settlement of money, like a tax return or, or whatever, whatever it may be. You 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 say, hey God, use this. Hey God, thank you for this blessing you just gave me. This big settlement of money, I'm gonna give this to God's kingdom, to this ministry or this church, right? And if you do that, you're testing God. And he will open the floodgates of heaven. And me coming from the world and thinking about pro- like a scarcity mindset, this and that, it makes sense that if you're giving to God's kingdom, that He's going to bless you. That might not always be financially, but He, you know, He's gonna bless you. If you're giving into God's kingdom, but Paul also talks about don't give if you're going to give bitterly, right? If you're going to grumble like, oh man, I got to, I got to give money to the church. These church stealing my money. These, these greedy people don't give if (laughs) you're going to be like that. You're supposed to be a cheerful giver saying like, man, this ministry, this, this church, whatever is blessing me. It's filling me. It's it. This is great. I want to bless this ministry or this church. I want to, I want to give into it. It it says give cheerfully. Right. And so that's something that I've been really doing is I'm a part of three church communities. I have a main one, which is local. I have one that's about an hour away from me. I go once a week and then I have one online that I'm really plugged into and I give to them cheerfully. Right. And I know that that's going to come back to me, maybe financially, maybe not, you know, it's, I'm going to get blessed from God somehow. Um, Cool guys. I appreciate you listening to me preach. Do you, do you guys have any uh, questions or comments or concerns before we get into John? John too? Anything? Cool. All right. So uh, Jacob, do you have a, a comment? I don't remember. I think it's in Peter, maybe. It says godliness with contentment is great gain." You were talking about ministries. A couple of years ago, the Lord laid ministry on my heart. I ordered 500 bags. I'll send you a picture of it here in just a second. I didn't have the money to fill them. I knew what was supposed to go in them. But the Lord provided $10,000 of money to fill those bags. And we filled 500 last year and we're fixing to fill another 500 this year. Amen. But the next ministry that the Lord's put on my heart, I don't understand how it's possible. I'm myself. I'm a recovered drug addict. I spent nearly two years in prison. (laughs) 
but I'm supposed to start a life recovery center. The land alone is $1.254 million. And I'm supposed to teach people how to live a godly life and how to live a sustainable life. To mend their broken fences and to heal just like the Lord's done for me. Because, you know, when I got out of prison, I didn't have no clothes. I didn't have no place to go. But I had a family that cared and gave me a place to live, bought me all of the things that I needed. But, you know, so many people get out of prison and they end up right back where they were because they were never given the opportunity to do better for themselves. So every day I get up and I keep trying and I keep figuring things out. But I'm looking to God and I say, Lord, I just don't understand. But there's another verse in Colossians that says to walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes when God tells you to do things. It makes no sense. The foolishness of God is greater than the best knowledge of man. This wasn't even my intention to be on here tonight. I just happened to see the notification. I was actually supposed to be outside tilling a garden again. But you know, when you're breaking up your fallow ground, it never says that it's going to be easy. There's going to be troubles. There's going to be trials. There's going to be strifes that come along in your life. But when you're looking to God for all of your help, it makes the hard things a lot easier. But I guess you can go ahead and join because that's all I've got. <laughs> I love it, man. Hallelujah. It's awesome, man. I will just, uh, you know, God's going to provide the way, man. I mean, and I think uh, a lot of the, uh, just the power of prayer and obviously putting in work and, and trusting God through the process. And you don't need to know how it's going to happen. You, you just need to, to pray and to, and to be obedient towards what he's telling you to do. And I'm sure God's going to put the people in your life and, and the, and uh, the opportunities that might come about. And it might not look the way that a lot of times, right. It doesn't look the way that, uh, that you think it's going to look, you know, it, it might be you buying the land and, and building the building and, and starting your own, or you might, you know, somebody might come along that just has the same exact purpose or calling for their lives. And, you know, um, has already built the building already has the ministry and you just fit in right perfectly. And God's wants to place you there, or maybe, you know, you're the leader of it and a whole bunch of people start backing you and have the same vision and purpose. So you never know how God's going to you know, manifest that and put it all together for you. But um, it's good that you have the calling and um, I just, you know, pray and, and trust in God and I'm sure it's going to work out and it's God's timing, right? So you might have the, uh, on your heart right now to do it right now. It might take you, it might take five years or it could happen tomorrow and it might just, you know, the opportunity might open. So um, I'm really glad you shared that and you know, I hope it inspires whoever hears it to uh to to listen to God and what calling God has for their lives. So I appreciate you sharing that, man. Welcome. Yeah, and uh, we're 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 rooting for you, bro. We're rooting for you. All right. Cool. Um, John two. If you guys want to open up the John two in your Bible or the Bible app or wherever you're gonna get into it, um. 
I guess I will read it is we have a it's a shorter chapter which is good because i already yapped along um this is the story i think god does two miracles in john 2 uh the water into wine and then uh or i think he prophesizes his crucifixion crucifixion um so i'll read along section by section and then we can discuss along the way so jesus changes water into wine john 2 uh, on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. If I'm pronouncing Cana right. Um, Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Jesus replied, woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not come yet. So that's the first four verses right there. And um, I think uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. I think it's funny. He says woman, but that's probably not how we talk nowadays. You know, some your mom or your wife or girlfriend asks you for something. You say, woman, it's not my time yet. <laughs> um, Cool. Verse five. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Verse six, nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for uh, ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Verse seven, Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim, verse 8. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. So he's just telling his disciples to, to do these things. I don't think anybody knows what's about to go down. Uh, so they did, and the master of the banquet uh, tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize what it had, where it had came from, come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice uh, of wine first, the out the choice of wine first, and then the cheaper wine afterwards. Uh, the guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. When uh, Verse 11, when Jesus did here in Cana, of Galilee was the first of the signs though which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him verse 12 after this he went down to uh Capernaum that's how I don't think that's how you pronounce it um with his mother and brothers and his disciples uh there they stayed for a few days so that's the first miracle that Jesus uh, performs in the book of John. Um, do you guys have any? I have something to to tell you guys about it. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys heard it before. Do you guys have any questions or any comments on the, the first miracle that Jesus performs? This is where, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. So uh, the, the thing that I learned uh, from one of my pastors about this to think about is Jesus turned water into wine. And if we refer back to when uh, the guy said, uh, most, everyone brings out the choice of wine first, uh, the brings out the best choice of wine first, and the, then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best for last. So this signifies that the wine was good, right? And... If you guys know anything about wine, I do, even though I don't drink anymore. Wine, especially good wine, takes years to to make, right? Five, 10, 20 years to get some, some really good tasting wine, right? It's not made quickly. Jesus did that in a snap of a finger. He's all like, boom. Man, he doesn't even... It doesn't even look like he did that. He just grabs the water, fills up with water, says, go take it to the people. And then it just magically turns the, into wine 
a process that could take five to 20 years happened within seconds or minutes. Probably boom, right? And so this is what Jesus did. It reminds me of when God, you know, made the universe, right? You know, he's boom. Now there shall be light or when he created the world and it was dark. Now there should be light. Boom, blows up, right? And it's it, there's light. And so thinking about what Jacob shared with us, something that seems like it could take 5, 10, 20 years to manifest, to create, to do on your own will or your own understanding or with your own work, if you rely on God or Jesus, right? He could do it like now. Water the wine. He could be like, you know, $1.2 million acreage, build that building, boom, happens within three months, right? Or happens within one day, Happen like boom, just happens real fast. And so I think it's a great miracle to remember um, because G it just shows um, God can do he could he could take a long time to answer your prayers, but also when he when he makes things happen, he could do it in seconds, just like in a moment, pow, right? So never underestimate the power of God, right? Well, remember he's Alpha Omega, he created the whole universe and everything in it, so you can't you can't doubt what Jesus and and God can do. All right. Um, Jesus clears the temple courts. This is verse 13, John 2. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at temples exchanging money. Verse 15. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the uh, coins of money in charges and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's temple or my father's house into a market. And he said that with an explanation mark. Um, his disciples remember that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews uh, then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove that you have the authority to do this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken us 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. Again, he's prophesizing his crucifixion, that he's going to die. He's going to die and be raised in three days. He's testifying or prophesizing. Um, after he was raised from the dead, his disciples recall what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Verse 23. Now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. But Jesus, who not entrusted himself to them, for he knew all people, he did not need any testimony about uh, mankind, for he knew what was in each person. So this, this again, uh, something I said about it, again, he's prophesizing about his, um, his crucifixion when he says, destroy the temple and I will raise it again in three days. Right. And then they say, Hey, it's, it took 46 years to build this temple. How are we going to raise it in three days? He's prophesizing about his crucifixion, him getting resurrected from the dead in three days. But this is what, what it made me think about is how we talked about turning water into wine. Jesus is like, I'll break down the temple and I will build it in three days. They say it took, it took 46 years, right? 46 years, Jacob, Zach, Daniel, Brian, 46 years to build this. And Jesus is like, three days. I got it. Right. That's what they're thinking. Obviously, he's talking about his resurrection. But I think it's just cool, again, that how fat when God decides to move, he could do something that took 46 years and he could do it in three days. He could be like, boom, watch this, you know. And so I think it's just really cool. Um, so what we see in John 2, I think the main things that stick out to me is obviously his first miracle in the book of john which is turning water into wine 
And then uh, the prophecy, right? Prophesizing his death, which he did all throughout the gospel, right? He's just saying, I'm going to die, you know, but very slick, you know? Um, so really cool stuff, guys. Do you have any, um, any, any re revelations, any questions, any comments? Uh, well, actually, I'm good. Amen. Hallelujah. That's revelation right there. God answered all your questions. Scripture is speaking right to your soul. Um, cool guys. We'll have to get off here in a few minutes. Um, do you guys have anything? I, I, so me, uh, the reason that I'm going through the book of John is I think it's the, the, you know, all of the gospel is good. So it's the first, you know, four books of the new Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right. It's the good news. It's, uh, you know, about Jesus, love me some Jesus. Um, so that we're going to week by week, we'll go over John three next week. And obviously we're talking about other stuff as well. Um, and so I think the main takeaway is, uh, I mean, with, uh, with the testimony that Jacob gave, um, and especially referring to John two right here is, Hey, God, we serve a mighty God and he's big. So don't be afraid to pray big. Um, because he, he, he will answer your prayers, right? It says in, uh, John 14, 13 and 14, let me, I guess I got it right here. Let me see it. I believe it's John 14, John 14, 13, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the father may be glorified in the son. You may ask me for anything in my name and i will do it john 14 verse 13 and 14 that gives me a lot of conviction when i'm praying i'm like jesus in jesus name you said if i pray in your name you're gonna answer my prayer so you, the, the father can be glorified right and i believe if it's in line with god's will right of course if you're praying for a, a ferrari or a lamborghini you know if it's not in god's will he's probably not gonna you know, probably not going to answer it but if it's in god's will and you pray in jesus name he said it he, he's a we serve a mighty true god right so he's going to answer his prayer your prayers um but it might not be on your timing or in the way that you think it's going to happen it might be in a completely different way and it might be faster or shorter or or longer than you thought it would take so i think it's really cool um you know with jacob with the great thing calling that he has on his life water to wine god might you know snap his fingers and right and i would just pray for discernment and wisdom and everything like that um cool guys any any uh last minute thoughts if not i'll, uh, I'll pray us out and we can uh gather again next week it's yeah well, well, uh, I, I have one concern yeah uh i just want to do like a quick prayer like like if you could like pray for me that 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 I'll receive healing from this medical report that seems like I have to live with the sickness and like I just ask God for healing. Okay. For sure. Everyone, if you guys want to put uh Daniel or uh, Brian on your prayer list, he needs healing from illnesses and sicknesses and whatever he's dealing with. Pray for Brian for his for his uh healing. Um, any other prayer requests? I'll pray for Jacob that he gets just a million dollars lands on his lap. Nah, somebody just throws him some land. Um, any other prayer requests? Does a uh, Saturday uh work better for you guys for the group call? Would that work better than Sundays? I mean, Sunday would be fine, but Sundays would uh, work for you. Yeah. What about you, Zach? Are we talking the same time? Give or take. Yeah, yeah, about the same time, either Saturday or Sundays. Sure. Either one better for you? Uh Saturdays probably. All right. Jacob. Saturdays, Sundays. What any what you're muted. Saturdays work better for me. Okay, for sure. 
for sure. Cool. I'll keep that in mind. We'll probably do next Saturday at the same time, 5 p.m., uh, 5.30 PST, 7.30 Central, 8, 8.30 Eastern time. I might do it 30 minutes earlier. We'll see. Cool, guys. I'll pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Master, Jesus, I pray that uh, everyone here today, I pray that their faith is increased in you tenfold. I pray that they have more conviction and belief in you, Lord. I pray that their desire to seek you uh, and find you is increased and that they just want to spend more time in your word, more time in worship and more time in, in talking to you and praying to you. Um, I pray for Brian, that you deliver him from his illness. I pray that you heal him, heal him from his sickness or his illness or whatever that he's dealing with. I pray in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ that you just heal him right now, Lord, heal him. Do a miracle in him, Lord. Um, if it takes time to heal him, then then let that be so. But if you could just heal him right now, Lord, and cast away any sickness and illness in his body. And I also pray for Jacob that you uh, that you answer his prayers, Lord, that you guide him in his walk of uh, doing the thing that you want him to do, that you give him the people and the opportunities that he needs to uh, turn the vision that you have for him and the calling that you have for his life into reality, I pray that you just give him the people and the opportunities that he needs and the courage, boldness, conviction, belief, and faith that he needs to go down this path as well. And I pray that you just answer his prayers and give him the clarity he needs. And I pray that everyone here just, uh, I pray that they have more wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. I pray that they're they're just walking boldly and courageously uh, in your name to glorify you and expand your kingdom. I say all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool, guys. Amen. Appreciate you, and I'll, I'll see you guys next week. God bless. Have a good one. Good you too. Bye. Bye.